Master Darwin Teacher Certification Assembly. This is a rare event in our school. And uh, to explain something about what it means, uh, Master Darwin Teacher Barbara Rose is going to give us. in Korean is Jido Oksa, and uh, G means to point correctly, and uh, Do means path, and Oksa means Dharma teacher. So, Master Dharma teacher means to point correct path. Teach Dharma. And uh, Ellen said these are rare events, and they're not as rare as I thought they were going to be, and so I think it's very wonderful for Sans Ming to encourage the students to stand up and try to carry on the tradition in America as quickly and strongly as we can. It's been very difficult, I know, for the present master Dharma teachers sometimes, and it's been very inspiring and very helpful for our practice, and I think better than nothing for the Sangos. I think it's been, we've had some wonderful retreats. And, <laughs> some very good times together. Um, so our tradition, our Korean tradition, Buddhist tradition, is uh, to use koan, practice. Koan um, means seal. And so in Oriental countries, the way to verify something, an important document, an important letter, is to have your, your original seal, a wax type seal or whatever, and, and to take the original copy of what you want transmitted and, and the copy and you seal them next to each other so they share half of the seal, each share half. And then if there's any question later that, that the document is genuine, you match them and you see that they do match. So koan practice is simply that, of asking questions of someone and feeling whether it's a genuine thing that comes back to you. So in any teaching tradition, it's very important for the teachers to be coming out with helpful, truthful dharma. And so Zen Master Sun San has uh, been given transmission by his teacher and came to America and has given so far four of his students Inca, which means that he has verified their koan practice. And before that happens, before he gives them Inca, so that's all. It's very wonderful that he has been given transmission by Inca by several Zen masters and then transmission by his own teacher. And then uh, it's a whole checking system to make sure that, that, that you know, phony teachers aren't walking around. And, and so not only does the teacher need to approve of, of his students or her students' practice, but also the whole assembly. That's today, this is assembly. Uh, very important for the assembly to also feel that what's happening is correct and helpful and truthful. So uh, Richard and Jacob um, are going to, I think first Richard, I'm not sure who's first, to sit down and, and uh, there will be 20, 25 minutes for us to ask each teacher, each Dharma teacher questions. And you come up to the cushion, the green cushion, do a half bow and a full prostration. This is, most of you probably have had interviews and then sit down and ask your question, receive the answer, and then if you feel clear about it, say thank you for your teaching, bow, do a sitting bow, stand up, do a full prostration, and go back to your seat. So that's the basic procedure for what's going to happen tonight. Um, you shouldn't ask a traditional koan that we use in our everyday retreats because then we'll all be thieves, we'll steal answers. So, and so they come up and say, Mousy's cat with the cat will have broken with them. And then <laughs> everybody wants this answer. So I'll assure you that Jacob and Richard both know the answer to the call on. And then ask uh, your own question. You know, you can ask, uh, it's very easy to make up a, a, a call on. Uh, just feel something that you think would be difficult to answer and ask. <laughs> <laughs> How much do I weigh? <laughs> so,
decide it's foolish or stupid. Another possibility is that maybe there's something there for us to learn. Uh, and uh, when I first met Sansanim, I would go for interviews and I didn't understand one bit of what he was talking about. And uh, uh, sometimes thought it was uh, uh, crazy or didn't make sense, whatever. I kept on trying to make sense out of it. But uh, there's something there. And there is, uh, it's very difficult to uh, be in that position that both Richard and Jacob were in. And we hear, it's very easy to say, uh, you know, what do you want? How can I help you? Maybe it seems like you could just sit up there and say that, and that would take care of it. You know? But uh, it's far from that. Unless, uh, uh, unless we can do that in our lives, doesn't work at all. You can't even, you can't even uh, begin to be there and uh, do that. So uh, it's a really um, it's a wonderful thing to have these ceremonies once in a while. I hope we have lots more of them. certifies that Richard is now authorized as a Master Dharma teacher in December 8, 1984. As a Master Sun
법사 중 법명은 법무법사 아, 법명은 법무법사 법명은 백 기하는 본선정의 지도법사 자기 이승을 증명한 갑자년 12월 8일 반음선정의 조실수입니다. In uh, the dreams that Jacob's Dharma name is Popu, Popmu Popsa, and the Kwan Zen School in Sansung uh, certified that he's now a master Dharma teacher, December 8, 1984. Oh. <laughs> 
or raising my daughter was gone, so it's not much of Dharma teacher. Before I come in here, so Gyorje time, very hard training. So also Gyorje one time, along Gyorje also one time strong, is, you know, one not rigid, long time ago in Sambasa, maybe seven years ago, or eight years ago. Then again, one of the retreat is the main thing of the rest of the rest. Many snow, they are very cold. Then after the one of the retreat, very sick, got hostile, and they almost die, but I can lie. Because he, not one of the retreat, maybe die. One of the retreat, so not die. Two times, be one of the retreat. Uh, one of the retreat, two times, and Long culture. That have try mind. So that try mind take away, his take away raising mind. So they call not Dharma teacher. Common practice means Jacob very smart, long term or finish, but <laughs> raising mind help. So that is a people help from. Now is that become not the Dharma teacher. So that's a many try mind. Both strong try mind. So if you have a try mind, any you bad karma, take away. Bad karma, take away your mind to clear. Your mind to clear is that then any kind of karma is no problem. Also your life is very clear. Also your direction is clear. Then in the see when you hear, oh, just like the truth. That's point. Not also become master damage, non special. Everybody become, everybody have try mind, correct direction as a try mind, everybody become mother dharma teacher, and everybody become teacher is possible. So I hope uh, today uh, Jacob and Richard become master dharma teacher. Not only Jacob and uh, Richard, everybody <coughs> are training, and uh, this world, not so many teachers I went to this world, okay? <coughs> Europe and India, or, or, Hong Kong, any around, 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 around. Then not so much teacher. They want to teach. So everybody uh, high training also become dan, master dan, also Richard and uh, Jacob more high training. Everybody. Then whole bit this world. What kind of work? What kind of work? Do we have them necessary? What kind of this world? What kind of keep me job? Okay. What kind of keep me job? Moment to moment. So then if you have your job, you must do it. That is our correct job and uh, our correct uh, my life and human beings, correct human beings responsibility. So that's a very important. Point. Don't understand my job. That cannot be supposed okay. First, understand my job. Very important. So, Master Dharma teacher, or teacher means understand my job. Okay. So, everybody understand my job and get enlightenment, save all being the process.
understand Dharma? Just 200 miles from here to New York. The only choice is whether to go by day or by night. About a year ago, I guess it was uh, last January, uh, Sunsunian came to New York and we had young Junjun and uh, finished off uh, a few cons that I had been working on for I don't know how many years. And uh, he said, uh, we'll have this uh, Master Dharma teacher uh, certification ceremony. So I had missed uh, the first one of uh, George and Bobby's, and I had also missed the second one of uh, Link and Mudoksin. So I didn't know what these ceremonies were like. So one time I asked uh, Ken Kessel, uh, what, what is the Master Dharma teacher ceremony uh, like? So he said, oh, you, you have to give very strong speech and read a poem and uh, answer uh, you know, everyone's questions. So I started thinking about that give very strong speech. Uh, so when I came up here in April uh, for Buddha's birthday, uh, initially I didn't know I was going to have to wait all this time, you know, a whole year. I thought, well, I'm coming in April, it's going to be in April. So when I found out it wasn't going to be in April, uh, I came up here and uh, we had uh, Buddha's birthday celebration and there were various speakers. and. Uh, one of the speakers was uh, Mahagosananda. Uh, I had seen Mahagosananda before a few times give talks uh, uh, in New York. And he gives an odd kind of talk. Uh, he, he starts out with some uh, fairly common sense uh, thing that almost doesn't need to be said at all, such as uh, you are what you eat. Uh, and then he begins to decline it. You know. <laughs> I am what I eat. You are what you eat. They are what they eat. Buddha is what he eats. The Dharma is what it eats. You know. He went on and on and on. Uh, as he went on and on and on, gradually his face got bright and it got red. And then his whole head was just glowing red. And Finally, he went to Sun Sanim and he said, uh, what is Buddha? And Sun Sanim said, your, your face is red. Uh, well, that was an amazing thing to me because what looked like embarrassment, you know, well, we all get red in the face sometimes. Uh, I had never seen that brand of embarrassment before in my life uh, because uh, the whole room got warm Everyone was enjoying it along with him, and uh, there was something very uh, unusual that happened. So I was amazed at that, and I was wondering at that, and at the same time I was thinking to myself, gee, I couldn't do that. And I have to give a very strong speech. <laughs> then George came up, and George had just finished uh, uh, one year of silence. <laughs> and he started talking about a rhinoceros. <laughs> and the more he talked about this rhinoceros, I thought he was the rhinoceros. <laughs> and uh, as, as George has said many times, he lives just on the edge. You know, and this rhinoceros was just on the edge that night, and it was extremely powerful. And again, I was amazed. And again, I thought to myself, gee, I can't do that. Uh, so as the months went on, uh, I put that aside. But every so often, this haunting question would come up, uh, you have to give a very strong Dharma speech. Uh, what is that going to be like? Uh, because, uh, you know, to give a strong Dharma speech, you have to have strong Dharma. <laughs> it's 
not possible otherwise. Uh, so I kind of reached a crisis point about three or four weeks ago, and I felt like, uh, let me call up Sunset and tell him, let's, let's forget the whole thing. Give, give me another year to get it together. Uh, but that didn't seem quite right to me either. Uh, I said, you know, after all, I've been practicing something or other for the better part of 20 years now, and I must have gotten something. <laughs> so, uh, let me tell you a story about uh, this guy I knew in New York. Uh, I know a man in New York who uh, is a student of transcendental meditation, and he's not your garden variety transcendental meditation type student, uh, meaning that he doesn't practice 15 minutes in the morning and 15 minutes at night uh, to lower his blood pressure or develop his alpha waves. He's a serious student, and he probably meditates more hours a day than I do. Uh, but this guy has one, one problem. Uh, his teacher, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, uh, opened up a residential center out in the Midwest somewhere, and he invited as many of his students as were willing to come there, to come there so that they could all live together and practice transcendental meditation, and if they had this uh, group all together at once, it was felt that the, the waves, the vibrations from this meditation were going to infiltrate the whole world and help with world peace. Uh, this guy is a fireman, by the way, which... Uh, Seems like a fairly bodhisattva-like job to me. Uh, I wouldn't want to do it. Uh, but anyway, uh, from time to time, this guy tortures himself with the fact that he wasn't a good enough disciple to move uh, to this community, and that he's still living up in Yonkers uh, working for the fire department. And when he gets really brutal with himself uh, about this whole business, uh, he goes one step further and he says to himself, uh, even though Maharishi says that uh, anyone can attain uh, self-realization, I know that the real secret teachings are only being given to those people <coughs> that gave up everything and moved to the Midwest, to this living center. So he says, I'm lost. Well, I've pointed out to this guy on numerous occasions that uh, that's neurotic as anything. <laughs> uh, he doesn't hold it for too long. Uh, anyway, why did I tell that story? Uh, because in 1975, when I first met Sun Sanim, uh, the thing that attracted me about Zen practice was that uh, we emphasize everyday mind is in mind. Any lifestyle is okay. Uh, what's more important than uh, whether you live in a Zen center or live outside a Zen center or are a monk or are a family person or uh, whatever, what's more important than that is why you do those particular things. Uh, and I needed very much at that time to believe in that teaching that embraced all lifestyles because uh, by 1975 I had three children and I was living in New York trying to establish a career there and I wasn't about to give up my three children who I cared about and who cared about me and me and me and uh, nor was I about to leave my wife nor was I about to leave New York City. There just was absolutely no choice in those matters. Uh, so, I was drawn to Zen practice because we emphasized that point, that uh, anything is okay. Now, perhaps my friend from the Transcendental Meditation Group really is right. Maybe, uh, maybe I've made a big mistake here. Uh, but, one continuous big mistake is also bodhisattva action. <laughs> so, uh, 
So when I thought about, you know, what, what is my dharma? Uh, what can I uh, uh, encourage people with? It's just that, to uh, face the fact of no choice. When you fully face the fact of no choice, you find your freedom. Uh, so, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, try to use that as your practice. And try to use it 100%. Uh, that is most important. It doesn't make any difference what you do. It's how you do it and how you use it. Uh, so, that's basically what I want to say to you. said, cause and effect are very clear. Yen Sutra says, all phenomena interpenetrate each other. Uman Zen Master said, every day is a good day. Finding it or in losing it, the way cannot be understood. Being correct or being wrong. it or giving it away still cannot be understood. What can you do? Today is December 8, 1984. Today is also Saturday. Today many things to many people. What is my truth? What is your truth? What is our experience? We hear many wonderful words and a lot of great speech. And as I have for many years, many of us think, that makes sense. That's wonderful. Now how can I do that? Or as Sam's name sometimes says, you must make it yours. So how do we make it ours? How can I make it mine? It was uh, sort of funny to me. Sam's name mentioned uh, four years ago, I was very sick.
perhaps in a sense was one of the most valuable experiences that I have had uh, during the years that I've been studying with Sansini. As Sansini said, I had some clever idea about many things that we discuss here. And in many ways I thought, gee, I understand a lot. And I even remember when Georgie and Bobby became master Dharma teachers. Uh, I'm not proud to say I was one of the people who said, damn it. Why that? <laughs> what do they have that I haven't got? So we know, but again, how do we find this way? And how do we make it ours? And how do we use it? Well, many things happen, and then I got sick. And then, somehow, something was happening that my mind just couldn't deal with in its usual way. In a sense, it just gave up. Maybe I would die. I feel so sorry for my mother. But it's okay. Just die. But one thing was very clear at that point. If I die, that's one thing. If I don't die, it's possible to give up. It's possible not to think in our habitual way. Maybe we want this because we want to keep it. We want to get it. We want to make it ours. But because we want to make it ours, so we lose it. Just die. No. To make it ours. life, which we call Zen life, or the life of truth, is nothing special. Isn't that strange? It really is nothing special. Maybe somebody from the outside would see us doing this, wearing these strange things and saying, well, this is nothing special. Just everyday life. <laughs> so we use every means because it works. If we try, it works. And something strange can happen. Maybe somebody thinks, I'm too stupid to understand. Fine, be stupid. Out of the stupidity, wisdom comes. Maybe someone thinks, well, I'm too lazy. It's my, uh, my specialty. <laughs> but try. Maybe, just maybe, out of this laziness, diligence will appear. A little bit, and maybe a little more, and a little more. One habit, good habit, keeps feeding on itself. Gee, I'm very selfish. I'll never be able to do this. Just try. From this 
selfishness, great generosity will appear. From anger, great love, great compassion. It's kind of magic. You don't have to do anything. Every day, we sit, we bow, we chant, and we try to do this practice. problems, but we have some direction. How can I make it mine? It's magic. Don't have to do anything. Long ago, an eminent teacher said, self, finding through self, Please look. 